January 1st, 2020. Happy, soulful, joyful, blissful, wonderful, hopeful, grateful, purposeful, meaningful, peaceful new year. Hello and warm welcome, dear listeners, to New Generation Women. And I'm Janine Fanzenos. And I just started in summer last year with my talks on YouTube. And boy, there's so much going to come. Hopefully, just the beginning and never an end. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And thank you to Michael for supporting and believing in me. And as I promised, here comes part two of my talk with Diana Richardson on the true power of sexuality. One of my earlier productions and top podcasts now also available for you. Enjoy. Welcome to part two of our interview, Slow Sex with Diana Richardson, a best-selling author, sex therapist, and with her husband, Michael Richardson. She leads a making love retreat to transform sex into love. Can sex really make us happy? Can it, Diana? Yes, it can. Um, unfortunately, sex is the source of a lot of unhappiness, but it's not sex in itself. It's that we don't have enough information how to really access our potential in sex. And when we do um, learn that or inform ourselves, it can make you happy. <laughs> um, let's talk about some experiences that I knew from other women and I also had. I am a dancer and we talked, you know, I also did some tango dancing. Tango dancing can be better than sex. And I was thinking, why is that? What is it, the quality of surrendering that we are able to give while we tango dance? Is it the respect of a man who is leading in a strong way? What makes women feel that tango, a good tango dance can be better than sex? Well, I, I would say basically because man is present to woman. And that's eventually what woman wants, is man present with her, around her, and especially present inside her. We can talk about surrender, you know, but it's more if, you know, woman, she's the receptive element of the male-female unit, and man is the dynamic aspect of that unit. So, you know, in tango dancing where, you know, people are just very present, this kind of flow comes naturally into play. It's not like, oh, I surrender. It's mm -hmm. just a natural quality of woman when she's present in the body. And, you know, same is true for man. So that is why women feel more connected because each person is present. They, they don't have a program. Exactly. They're not going somewhere. Exactly. And I think what we women felt, um, well, the ones who are talking about that, it was a respectful way of, you know, this how men would deal when they would come. Also, when I went to America, there was Howard. I still remember Howard. He was 70 years old. But the way how he asked me for a dance, the way how he treated me through the dance and then went back with me to my seat, that was there was some kind of sensuality in that. And he was 70. I mean, Howard, 70 from America. But I really love that. Yes, yes. It's true. Because actually, as far as respect goes, we don't really respect our bodies. And, um, you know, sex is not really done with any understanding. So there's a natural loss of respect, you know, for the body and the difference between male and female bodies. Yeah, that's right. We, we're talking about also the bravery that a woman needs to say no when she doesn't feel good in her body. How can you talk and have an open dialogue with a man that he's not so hurt in his ego and start in self-defensing mechanism or even worse? It's also how you say something. If you say something in a blaming way, then mm -hmm. naturally the ego defends. But if you say something in a really heartful, sharing way, that will touch another person's heart. And they will start to listen. So I think it's the, how we communicate and the energy behind it. Like I say, because blaming always has like your fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you say like, you know, you, if you talk about yourself and your body, not what they're doing wrong, but what you feel in a heartful way, this will communicate. But it does really, really help um, that there is an interest in what more is possible through sex mm -hmm. 
we only know the very superficial level. So, you know, I've been doing making love retreats and ten know, years, I think. Come, yes, yes. <laughs> couples come, of course, with lesser and greater degrees of interest. Often, the man is more resistant. The woman is saying, "Look, you know, we're not making love anymore, and we need some help." And men are like, you know, more resistant. That's not global, of course. But what is interesting, and I've observed over the years now, teaching since 1993, that men, if, if a partnership breaks up, which some do, then men come back as soon as possible with a new girlfriend. That's amazing. The, amazing, amazing. It, I would have thought the opposite. Yes. And Michael and I are looking every time, like, as it started happening, you know, kind of mid-90s and so on, it's like, what's going on? And it's really continued like that as soon as a guy's got a new girlfriend he's back there because when woman also moves out of this doing um belief that in excitement then she drops back more into her receptive absorbent nature which is intrinsic this then creates the, the possibility for male energy to flow into woman If woman is like holding the vagina tight, trying to get excited, mm -hmm. trying to come mm -hmm. herself, mm -hmm. then yes. then there's no space. There's no channel between the penis and vagina. So this is really goes back to the power that woman has. She receives man into her. Now I'm talking about conscious man, you know. Yes. And yes. If, if man is aggressive, woman naturally closes because it hurts and she has to defend. Yes. So I'm not saying woman must just receive any man, whatever he wants to do. But if a man really is willing to go consciously with awareness into woman's body, she then can truly relax her vagina and open. And then the whole environment within the vagina just becomes like absorbent. And it starts to draw the male energy. So for the first time in his life, a, a man will feel his sexual energy actually flowing in like almost a magnetic m bioelectrical way this is so and interesting that, sorry sorry Keep and on. that <laughs> is like deeply touching yes and that's... this is why men bring their women back because they have tasted this difference um when a woman is just pumping back or for woman relaxes and allows this real deep touching of penis in the vagina which can even Some of us have had the experience, even maybe in conventional sex, where things suddenly slow down for a bit, that when man deeply touches a woman in her vagina, it's like her heart is being touched. Mm. And, you know, naturally then a woman feels the love and then showers the man with love. So there is this circle on a magnetic level that happens between male and female bodies when we are in the present. I am... Um You, you hear that I'm excited about that because <laughs> I mean, yes, because there is something I remember that this, um, I mean, it, it goes, it's so contra to what we're living, you know, this stressful, intense life, this, and then as a woman, you have to learn to stop also to slow down and surrender and surrender is a quality that is so needed for a woman, but in this society and this time, so hard to also you know to do that made click in me and i completely surrendered and that was very erotic and when i had came into that energy of totally surrendering i didn't do anything except letting go and surrendering um that's when he was very aroused by that it was yes. just an energy thing and i was so impressed by it yes no that's absolutely right janine um and that thing you know it's just coming present being to being that things start to move by themselves. Like you say, there was, you know, something moved, something very erotic just by mm -hmm. itself, not with any uh, excitement, not with any stimulation. So this is the importance of, yeah, coming back to the body from the mind and accessing what is there. And that's so good to hear. I have a lot of women I'm coaching and they have, you know, they are married and they have smaller kids. They are working moms. So they tell me, almost all of them i'm too exhausted to have sex with my man yeah he wants it but that you know he gave up on it because i really rather like to cuddle my child instead of having sex because i think when you're not talking it's because of the agenda they think they need to perform and also the man that they think oh no that's way too 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 hard for me um yes 
you know, sex as we know it is hard work. That's why we think we need energy for mm-hmm. it. Exactly. But actually, when we, we do slow sex, uh, you know, it just happens by itself. Um, you don't have to pump it up in any way. And women feel that more than men. Because anyway, women is suffering or experiencing she's entering sex before she's really ready for sex and all women know that they would like to have another hour cuddling this is just because her body takes longer to warm up um so that's why for women is also an extra effort you know because you're going against actually what your body is longing for yes or your body's asking for so yeah it, um, it feels like uh, too much action and i remember sex. yes but I remember that in slow sex in your film, and that was giving a lot of hope. I really liked also what men were saying. And um, I remember that one man said, finally, sex is relaxation again for me. Well, this is what is interesting. And like you say, you know, we're not really aware, but man has got tremendous, tremendous anxiety and tension about being a good lover mm-hmm. and his level of performance. So this is dominating uh, his whole sexual experience. Um, in subtle ways, in not so subtle ways, which then prevents him from being here. Also, women expect from men, you've got to have an erection all the time, you, you know. So women also put a pressure on man because of sexual misunderstanding. So when women and men are put in a new frame of sex and look at the other aspect of sex, that you don't need to come every time, you don't have to get horny, you don't have to build up energy you can just relax and let the body do it in a more subtle and nourishing way men feel tremendously relieved and yes i think this is you're really right this is something that we fail to appreciate men and women like how performance is dominating the male mind when men come to you and um a couple comes to your retreat Are they reluctant um, in the beginning to to learn that? Do they think this is so hard work? Or are they very open right in the beginning? There's no generalization. Um, But generally, because couples have made that commitment and come Mm -hmm. to the workshop, there is a level of openness. Although when the actual moment comes, because, you know, to practice in privacy, it's always a challenge. Because you're going from the known to the unknown. So in that moment, different, um, you can have different levels of resistance or you might just think, what the hell, I'll just do it the usual way. But, you know, it's, you've got to start somewhere and you keep entering again and again with more awareness, with, you know, more understanding. And it is rare, very, very rare that at the end of a retreat that neither or, you know, have gotten gotten the the way of course it takes practice to really anchor it mm-hmm. but as soon as people start to feel mm-hmm. the love flowing mm-hmm. and also that they feel better in themselves the interest is there again and many couples say oh it's like we fall in love again mm-hmm. uh, like when of we course. first met each other <laughs> yes so it's this kind of awareness honoring the body the respect the time all these things bring back the spark and um, yeah <laughs> I asked um, I asked a man before I went into the interview and said is there any question that you have from a man perspective and he said yes um, why do men have <laughs> which I thought hey, that's the con- coming from the conventional mindset why do men have so many fantasies because I hear a lot of men including myself that's what he said I'm having a lot of fantasies while having sex with women absolutely and you know it's as sex has become a, a fantasy has become the fire that's where people get okay. the excitement because we have the belief that sex equals excitement but it does not you can have sex for a long time without excitement the more excitement we have the sooner man ejaculates um so yes fantasy has become a very large aspect of uh, the sexual behavior but mostly because we've lost access to really listening and feeling the body from inside so it is a tremendous disturbance 
mostly when you get to know someone, you have great sex, a lot, lots of sex in the beginning, and then it, you know, it, it, it gets less, and then sometimes it goes away completely. When we uh, first meet, we mm -hmm. are very present with each other. The hearts are open. So everything is here now. Okay. And when we're in the here now, you know, life takes over. The force takes over. The power takes over. And then after a while, we get accustomed to each other. And so there's a slow declining of presence. Um, and then, you know, then we click back into the honeymoon is over. So it's this moment when we're totally plugged into each other and totally present that the sexual energy will flow more easily. There's another aspect as far as women go, um, if you would like me to explain that. Yes, please. You know, it's to do with man and woman are equal and opposite forces. Yes. And um, The yin and yang, of course. Yes. But each individual within themselves has got male and female aspects. Yes. And this is the ancient understanding of Tantra, which is 15,000 years old, and only in recent decades, through chromosome study, this has been proved. Yes, woman is also part, has man, and man has, also has woman. So this means that very literally and basically in our bodies, we have an inner magnet. Now, in man, his positive, you know, a magnet has a positive pole and a receptive pole. Mm -hmm. An energy-raising pole and an energy-absorbing pole. Mm -hmm. Now, in man, his energy-raising pole is actually in the genitals, in the penis. And his receptive pole is in the heart. Uh -huh. Now, woman, as equal and opposite force, her receptive pole is the vagina. And you can see that. It's canal received, to receive. Yes. Um, her energy-raising pole is in the breast. And if you look at life, you know, women uses the, through the breast, she sustains life. So, women's, where women's sexual energy is accessed through her breast and not her vagina and her clitoris. So, again, you know, if we want to bring another level into the lovemaking, women has to make a shift away and to bring the breasts into play and men also to acknowledge the breast. And that's the way of accessing her deeper sexual energies, not through stimulating the clitoris or through a lot of uh, friction movements in the vagina. So when, when we first meet, the hearts are open. So that means a woman's heart is naturally just overflowing. It's her, her energy-raising pole. And that's why she really loves to make love. But after a while, as things kind of get more normal, then it's not the heart closes or love disappears, but we know that there is this shift from being present and alive and in love to loving. Mm -hmm. And so that's why for women, it looks like, um, yeah, we like it all hot in the beginning, you know, we horny in the beginning, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's because her energy raising pole, she's, she's again and again ready for sex. What would you advise to a couple to maybe come back to sex if they have lost touch with sex? It really does help if man understands that woman's body warms up more slowly, that if woman has time, you know, just to feel her breasts, if man can caress the breasts or hold the breasts, not stimulate them, this brings, opens her body in a much deeper way that she will feel like yes, yes to sex, not just, okay, he's ready kind of thing mm. um, so what we need to do is to become more polarized in relation to each other you mentioned a few minutes ago about um, you know we women basically we've become a bit masculine in a mm. masculine world mm -hmm. and we've we've lost that capacity to you know be more receptive more feminine and it all anchors in sex so how we have sex men and women both is male and so really to, to make a shift, both men and women need to access their more feminine natures, um, which is through presence, through sensitivity, you know, through being in the here and now. And then we gain access to a deeper level 
of sexual energy in our bodies, which you, you said, you know, a few minutes ago, something is just moving without you doing it. What yes. you're saying is as if you bring everything now back into a balance that yes. has been there long before and has gotten out of balance. Exactly. And I think that's really the good way to close. It's something the body already, it exists in the body. The body knows. We just have to bring our mind back, think more into the body and listen more to the body. Um, you know, it's a natural intelligence. It's wonderful. We will have an next interview with Diana Richardson on cooler sex. How cool is that? And I really mean that. Her new book and our topic, Cooler Sex for Teens. Yes. This is a topic that is so dear to my heart because Sex and Love for Teens is also a part of the program of the modern school of life. Especially through the internet, there's so much, excuse me, shit going on when it comes to sex. And of course, young people are curious, looking for orientation, trying things out. And that is part of the job description of being a teenager. But if nobody has this really good sex talk with them, that's when the shit hits the fan and the confusion around sexuality continues to spiral downwards. Ladies and gentlemen, that was part two of NGW and NGM Radio Hour with Janine Manzinas. Thanks to our interview guest, best-selling author and sex therapist, Diana Richardson. And thanks for listening. And hear you hopefully soon again. Bye.